Welcome to the Battery Testing Mentor Podcast. My name is Johannes and here I discuss all topics around battery testing, battery safety. Short, on the point and with practical advice. Also visit www.batterytestingmentor.com and sign up for the email update. With every episode I send out an email with a summary of that episode. And should you have any questions, comments, feedback, just hit reply on that email and you directly reach me. Today I picked an, a completely new topic. I looked into the testing and there's a battery testing and I took out the UN38.3 standard. Why did I do this? Basically UN38.3 is the most basic testing standard that is there for lithium ion batteries cells. Um, every cell that is transported somewhere basically needs to be tested according to this unless you want to rely on prototype approval stuff and so on but it, taking this out of the scope if you have a serious production battery basically you need to do this UN38.3 testing. It's important also to note that it's a testing it's not a certification um, what is the difference? So certification means somebody, some, some other organization, uh, gives you a formal paper with a stamp and so on and uh, it says you have passed the standard. For the UN 38.3 it's enough to have basically to, to guarantee that you pass this standard. And in the end you can even do the test in your own backyard. Um, the only thing is that in your own backyard maybe you don't really fulfill all these regulations in terms of uh, accuracy and, and repeatability and if so, there's a problem um, you might have a hard time prove that you really did this test. But apart from this let's go into the standard into the UN38.3. What is it? The UN38.3 is not really a standard, it's maybe more a part of a standard. It's part of a huge document with 536 pages, um, which is the UN manual for of tests and criteria. Um, and it is has been released by the United Nations, therefore UN, um, and it governs kind of how dangerous goods are transported and how they are especially categorized. It's not so much about transport but how are they tested that you kind of can get into certain categories to transport these batteries or the, these products in general safely. It really reaches from chemicals to batteries like you name it whatever is maybe dangerous is, is governed there. And in these 536 pages there's the chapter 38.3 um, which is then really like the test procedures for batteries. The newest edition is the seventh edition from 2019 that means there has been a lot of editions before. There were not so many changes but like if we just for, for completeness we talk about that one. Uh, what needs to be tested is in the first question and there is a an, an whole matrix what needs to be tested it starts from, from cells that are um, uh, not rechargeable so the primary cells that you can buy in, in uh, supermarkets or for your um, mobile devices and goes really up to battery packs modules but whatever has lithium inside in as a battery is governed there and it even goes now beyond um, so if you have new chemistries like sodium ion bat uh, batteries they are just subsumed under this as well and they need also need to fulfill this there are also a lot of yeah special rules so if you have this one thing then you don't need to do a test and so on like um, there are, for example, the, these regulations that about where you have the, the protection for overcharge, how the, the battery is treated, how it's transported, um, how it's possible to charge the battery. 
this all goes into deciding what tests are necessary. So what tests are there in this document? We have a test, T1 to T8. Um, it is kind of important to memorize these because people who know about this or are in this UN 38.3 theme inside, they basically refer to, this, to these tests only as T1 to T8 and then you need to know it. Um, maybe it's to show that they know it, maybe it's also just to save time uh, and not need to say the whole word for the test but just T1, T5 and so on, it maybe saves some seconds. Nevertheless, let's go through these uh, tests. T1 is the altitude test. Um, that means bringing the, the sample to 15,000 meters height or simulate this, of course, um, to keep with, with an under pressure. T2 is a thermal test where you basically cycle the battery, the, the, the set test samples, the DUT, the device under test, from minus 40 to 72 degrees, back and forth for 10 times and, and of course leave it there for a certain amount of time. Then we have T3, which is the vibration test, where you go like vibrate up to 200 hertz, which is not too severe, like uh, in, in a lot of other applications you go 2000, 2000 hertz. Um, so this is very low frequencies, which are more like, yeah, like during transport. Um, yeah, you also uh, vibrate on each axis for three hours each. T4 is then the shock test, um, which makes sense after vibration. Normally you also have then shock included. This really depends on the weight of the sample. It goes up to 150 G, um, but can also go significantly lower if you have a higher weight. And in the end, you do 18 of these shock tests. Then we have T5, uh, which is the external short circuit test. There you uh, short circuit the sample with 100 milliohm um, uh, resistance at an elevated temperature. Now there can be a lot of discussions, uh, like this 100 milliohm is not a too severe short circuit but on the other hand, it's also more like simulating the transport and you basically do not transport the, the battery and then kind of take, a, I don't know, a an, solid clamp and connect plus and minus. But typically it's more like uh, parasitic short circuits, therefore it's maybe like a little bit higher. On the other hand, the, the high temperature um, can make it more severe. There, there are some discussions also like is it really more severe or is it maybe even easier to pass if you have high temperature? Um, but this is some discussion that doesn't belong here in the when we talk about the UN38.3 testing. Um, <clears throat> then we have T6, which are two tests and like either an impact test or a crush test. Impact means you put the cell on the ground, put a bar above it and then put a like, let a weight fall onto it. This is done for smaller cells, um, uh, for, for cylindrical cells. Uh, I mean, it's not really small because it's a diameter of 18 millimeter or, or larger. So if you have also like bigger cells, um, big, bigger cylindrical cells, you also do this test. Um, for crush test, you take all the other cells and then you need to put a crush force of 13 kilonewton um, onto the cell. Then we have T7, which is the overcharge. So overcharging the, the sample um, up to like either 22 volt or 1.2 times the maximum voltage. This is not done on, on cell level, uh, so it's not 22 volt at cell level. Uh, it's more than on the assembly level. And then the last test is the force discharge test where you really go down, uh, kind of discharge the battery below its operating um, limits. Typically at a test when nothing happens because it's, it's you damage the cell, but it's not 
acutely damaged more like typically with forced discharge if you then use it afterwards the the problems occur when so we have these a test t1 altitude t2 thermal t3 vibration t4 shock t5 the short circuit t6 impact or crush t7 overcharge and t8 forced discharge and then we apply these tests on the samples and there are different categories like i mean the, the, the different um, uh, levels the cell level the module level the pack level and there are then all the regulations in the un38.3 that defines what tests need to be done and if you have a typical ev battery cell or, or like the larger cell then we need to do to the test t1 t2 t3 t4 t5 t6 t7 not but t8 and this is now only the cell we also need then to look into the module and there it's also defined as t1 to t5 and then the t7 but there are again some rules like t7 you don't need to do if you don't really use the module it itself and as you normally have the module in the battery pack you don't need to do then the t7 so you can skip it and it's a little bit easier the nice thing is then for the battery pack level that there are some regulations like if you have more than 6.2 kilowatt hours and you build the battery pack out of modules and cells that both have been tested you don't need to do the test uh, pack test at all um, now if you look at this and think about this uh, clause like with this built out of modules and and uh, cells then we think oh there is this new concept of cell to pack like skipping the modules and go straight from the cell into a battery pack you come to the point that you say oh you don't have modules that have been tested you only have cells and then this clause does not apply anymore and then on pack level you suddenly need to do the same tests as you previously would have done on, on module level um, so it gets then a little bit more complicated on the other hand you hopefully save so much more in in efficiency in making the battery better uh, by the cell to pack design that these additional tests will not make a difference one thing that we didn't talk yet about is the results of these tests uh, as we need to keep in mind this is a transportation test so basically like the the goal is to make sure the transportation is safe therefore the results kind of reflect this and very simply speaking because time is again running out for the first test t1 to t4 there should not happen anything like altitude thermal uh, change thermal shock thermal cycle vibration shock the cell should survive without any uh, damage and then if you go to the other test t5 uh, to t8 like the the more abusive tests short circuit impact crush overcharge and forced discharge there basically um, the the reaction should be not uh, putting anyone at risk like there are some uh, descriptions like there should be no fire there should no temperature be above 170 degrees on the surface of the battery um, no disassembly so the battery should not explode kind of it the, the battery can be damaged completely but it should not lead to any uh, yeah, harm for the people around or the transporting it overall in summary the tests are pretty standard they are pretty straightforward pretty easy not too difficult uh, I would say in the end also to be honest if the battery the cell has a problem passing the UN3803 test where it's more about transportation of the battery um, I do not want to know 
what problems come up when you really operate the battery and you do a vibration test. So like you, you really have the, the uh, testing under severe um, use conditions. Um, there really the, the interesting part starts. I hope I gave you an interesting introduction into this UN38.3 testing and I'm looking forward to then yeah, seeing you, hearing you next week again here at the Battery Testing Mentor Podcast.